Time to do a little preseason prediction, Bucky. And as we go towards 2017 campaign, looking at the AFC East, we preview the divisions a little differently, though. The Move the Sticks Scouting Index. Yeah, so we take a composite ranking. Well, we take quarterbacks, skill positions, O-line, front seven, secondary, and coaches, tally them all up, and we use a golf score where the lowest score means you're the best team, and we take that to determine who should be the division winner. All right, let's jump in here. Let's start at the quarterback position. Let's work four to one, worst to first, and I think number four is an obvious one. Oh, that's pretty easy. How about the New York Jets coming in at four? You don't like their quarterback situation, Josh McCown and the rest of the guys. The Miami Dolphins third, Buffalo Bills second, but coming up as the top. How about Tom Brady and Jimmy Garoppolo representing the New England Patriots? Yeah, look, Miami's intriguing to me at number three. Jay Cutler taking over Ryan Tannehill. Bummer on the injury of Tannehill. I want to see him take that next step, but Jay Cutler has that familiarity with Adam Gase. We'll see how that goes. But at the very top of the division, tell me if I'm crazy. I wouldn't be shocked if Tom Brady has the best season of his entire career this year with all the weapons they have around him. Oh, I mean, it's hard to say that he's it's going a 50 to touchdown year in his better. Past. I know. 50 touchdowns. I'm just saying. I mean, 50 I wouldn't be shocked. To go back, I mean, they're going to light up scoreboards because they have a complete arsenal around him. They have running backs for days. They have wide receivers, tight ends. They have everything that you look for. And he is the best at getting the ball out of his hands and allowing things to happen, allowing others to make plays for him. So, yeah, I won't argue against the fact that he's going to have maybe the best season of his career at age 40. 50? You don't think he's got you 50 just, you just don't. You just don't think that a guy at 40 can continue to be in his prime. All right, we'll see. All right, let's go to the skill positions here again. Starting at the bottom of the division, I'm almost feeling bad for the Jets, but I don't know how we go any other direction but the Jets with last in this division. Yeah, if you're the New York Jets and you don't have a thrower and you have nondescript pass catchers and maybe you have a runner in Matt Forte, but Matt Forte can't carry the ball 50 times a game, how are you going to put the balls in the paint? Tough for the New York Jets to score. The Buffalo Bills are a team that they have Shady McCoy, but on the outside, a lot of unknown They're all gone. commodities. Got rid of Sammy Watkins. You don't Good have, one's gone. You don't Anquan have Anquan Bolden came yeah, and left yeah, already. Yeah, so it's going to be tough for them to score. Now, the second team, the Miami Dolphins, I'm excited about their skill their skill positions. I love their wide receiver core, Devontae Parker, Kenny Stills, uh, Jarvis Landry being inside. You talk about the running back, J.J. being a Pro Bowl player. They can challenge and rival the New England Patriots, but, but we got Tom Brady but, pulling the trigger. It makes it hard. I uh, look at all the skill positions they have. They have receivers for days, and I think you look at Brandon Cooks coming in. Big addition. He's going to add a, a, a big time element, a vertical element to this attack. And you look at Edelman in the slot. You look at Gronk if he's out there healthy. But there you go, there you go, Malcolm Mitchell. Malcolm who Mitchell actually played home. well Super Bowl. They're loaded. I mean, they they, they have got so many guys they can get the football to. They bring it over another back. Rex Burkhead, Burkhead, James White, Deion Lewis. It goes on and on and on. This is a team that has a lot of pieces around the quarterback, and so I think he's going to flourish. I think this team is going to flourish. There's a reason why people expect them to be an unbeaten team at the end of the regular season. Well, they say you win up front, Bucky, so let's go to the offensive line, and again, uh, not Man, to we have to quit like picking on it. I feel, like, I feel like we're being bullies oh, to the New right, let's just, All right, let's, the Jets are fourth. Okay, we're not even going to say nothing. The Jets are fourth. Jets let's are go fourth. to the let's New go. England Patriots. We have some concerns about the New England Patriots. Nate Soldier's been in and out the lineup. Can he get back and be healthy? The Buffalo Bills coming in at second. The best offensive line, as we see it, the Miami Dolphins. Yeah. And even though they've reshuffled this offensive line a little bit, Larry Tunsil kicks out to left tackle, gets a chance to play. They still got Pouncey inside. This is a team that I expect to play much better. And if they can get that running game going, we talked about Jay Cutler and the Dolphins quarterbacks ranking third. Maybe that kicks them up a notch. And if they kick up a notch, I think they may make a return visit to the playoffs. Good news, Jets fans. We're going to talk about the defense right now. Let's go over to the front seven, Bucky, and we work four to one here. Not the Jets in last place in this division at this spot. No, we got the Buffalo Bills coming in at fourth. And they have talent. They have Marcel Darius. They still have Jerry Hughes. But Kyle we just Williams, wonder, I think, 100 years old. Right, we just old. wonder, how is this going to fit in a new scheme? They come from Rex Ryan's scheme. They now go to Sean McDermott, Leslie Frazier's scheme. How will they find a way to have that production? So because of that, we're going to put them fourth. New England Patriots at third. Still trying to yeah. figure it out. The guy that they were excited about, Derek Rivers, unfortunately, Terrors and ACL, he's not available to them. They're still looking for that dominant pass rusher off the edge. That is the thing that they're missing. That's probably the biggest hole on their Love roster. Love what they have with Dante Hightower and the versatility he brings to the table. But when you look at the defensive lines of the teams ahead of him, I don't see how you can put the Patriots over the Dolphins, who we have and in the Sue, second spot. Cameron Wake. Uh, you talk about their ability to be able Charles to get Harris. after passing. Charles Young, he'll, he'll come along. He'll come along. There. He'll be able to get there. But 
just up front, their ability to be able to dominate. Bring over Lawrence Timmons. I like their linebacker Kiko. Core. They're, they're pretty good up front. They're going to be able to challenge the Patriots. I don't think they can overtake them, but I think they're going to be able to make it very, very competitive. Who do we have number one there, though, Buck, huh? Oh, who we got? the New York Jets. There you How go, about Jets that? fans. Just for you. No, this is, this is a front now. If they have their motor running, uh, this defensive line can be as good as any in the National Football League. And I think Leonard Williams, you were seeing him emerge right before our eyes. He is no question a star in this league and be a dominating player. They need to get the rest of those guys playing up to their potential. No, they do need to get the rest of those guys playing. But when you invest in that defensive line like they have, um, three first-round picks, Muhammad Wilkerson, Sheldon Richardson being able to be a disruptive player when his head is screwed on straight. He can be an upper echelon elite player. And then Leonard Williams, you talked about, this is a guy that has come in and has really made an impact. The Jets should be able to dominate the game from a defensive standpoint just because they can control the trench. All right, secondary, we have Buffalo coming in at the fourth spot, Bucky. The Jets we have in the three hole there. Some some. I like their I like their rookie say Marcus I, May, Jamal Adams. I think that should help him. And then Mo Claiborne played pretty well for the Cowboys a season ago. Let's see if he can do it again. Young but very talented there. I like that group of safeties. We have the Miami Dolphins in the two hole, and then the New England Patriots. Look, if Stephon Gilmore on one side of the field and they keep Malcolm Butler happy and keep him on the football team, which would be kind of a Patriots thing to trade him like the day before the season probably, probably so. Right before week one, get rid of him. He goes off somewhere else and they continue to keep it keep it moving. But what they have, they have two high. Pro Bowl players on the outside. You have McCourty, who is basically a corner in the middle of the field, ranging from numbers to numbers. They have everything that you look for in the secondary. They now can match up, and they do a great job of using some of the guys that they have in a reserve role in key matchup situations like they did Eric Rowe a season ago. No, no question. I know. I believe that there's something in that, uh, that trade with the Eagles where if Eric Rowe plays more than 50% of the snaps, the Eagles draft pick goes up around. So I know there's a lot of people in Philadelphia hoping Eric Rowe has one heck of a year. Uh, let's go to the coaches here, Bucky, working 4-1. to one. You know, I like Sean McDermott a lot, but, a lot, but this is his first year as a head coach, so we're going to put him at – Four. I think he's going to get the program turned around, but we have him at four. Todd Bowles at three. Uh, the Miami Dolphins at two. Adam Gates did a great job his first year getting them to the playoffs, but look, it all starts and starts with Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. They deserve to be at the top. He is the best coach that I've ever seen in terms of being able to take what you do and completely neutralize it and find ways to always push the envelope to give his team a competitive advantage. Always moving the thing forward, never satisfied. and uh, He's the best in the business. Uh, like him or not, Bill Belichick is at the top of the mountain and has been for quite some time. So we look at the, the finals here, the rankings. Offensively, Patriots right up there at the top, followed by the Dolphins, the Bills, and then the Jets, who have some work to do on the offensive side of the ball. But when we flip it over to the defensive side of the ball, I would imagine the Jets are a little bit better when we flip it over once we tally these. Yeah, they up. are. They have to be better because when you Show think about their defense. front seven, their front seven and what they have, the personnel that's available to them, they certainly have the ability to be able to get after the passer. And in this game, in this division, with the quarterbacks that are there, you have to be able to knock them around. They move up, look at that. They're tied tied for, for first. first. Dolphins, Patriots, Jets, Bills come in at four. You have to like that, you have to be encouraged. And if I'm a Dolphins fan, I'm really excited because we're tied for the top on defense. We're only a notch behind the Patriots on the offense. That should kind of put us in the mix. There you go. Here is the total here. Final tally. Put all the numbers together. We have the Patriots as our favorite heading into the season. We look at all the talent they Dolphins have. Dolphins are far behind. Campus. The Dolphins, though, right behind them. And then Bills and Jets, Bucky. Uh, watch, watching a lot of USC, UCLA, Wyoming football, potentially. Yeah, I guess got some work to do. Got some work to do. A little bit of work to do. Maybe they shock us. Who knows? But uh, right now, going into the season, looks like the Patriots division to lose.